Swift 5.7 is a surprisingly huge release. It is packed with a new stuff. It adds small changes like if let shorthand, up to big one like regular expressions. Today I would like to show you a couple of most interesting new features. Let's get started. Enable multi-statement closure parameter result type inference. In this one, the behavior of the multi-statement closure has been changed. Now the parameter and result type can be inferred from a closure body. Let's check it on the simple example here. Right now this is a single statement closure as we have just this one here. But if we add anything else here, let's say this one, it will be a multi-statement closure. Because we don't have an explicit return, in this closure the type will be inferred to void. In Swift 5.6 you will see an error. Let's open this in the old Xcode. Cannot infer return type for closure with multiple statements. The compiler no longer can infer the type. We could help it by providing the type. But in the Swift 5.7 we no longer have to do this. Let's switch to Xcode 13 with the Swift 5.7. And let's remove the return type. The compiler can now infer the return type from the inside of the multi-statement closure. The first return statement in this closure will determine the closure return type. So if you will have more than one return, both of them has to be the same type. Let's change it a little bit. Now we have two returns. Both of them returns string. Let's change the first one to return integer. The compiler will expect the return type of this closure to be int and it will throw an error. If let shorthand for shadowing an existing optional variable. It is so far my favorite feature from the latest Swift. It simplifies the way you unwrap the optionals by shadowing an existing optional variable. You no longer have to explicitly create a new variable. So instead of this, as usual, you can just remove this one. This greeting variable will be shadowed and you can use it as usual. I made a separate video about this feature with additional examples. You can find the link in the description. Moving on, clock, instant and duration. New types representing time and clocks were introduced. We have a new protocol clock, which defines a new concept of now and a way to wake up after a given time. There is a new duration protocol that defines the elapsed duration between two instants that are represented by a new instant protocol. We have two types for representing a clock, suspending clock and a continuous clock. The suspending clock type is being suspended when a machine is suspended and the continuous clock progresses no matter what. Let's take the sample code and play with it in the playground. We need to fix it and add some clock. We have a continuous clock here and when we call the sleep function, with now advanced by 3 seconds, it will suspend this function for execution for 3 seconds. There's also additional parameter tolerance, which is nil by default. It allows the scheduling mechanism to offer a slightly adjusted deadline, so it can be more power efficient. Let's add start here. And let's run our function. As you saw in the debug area, there was start and three seconds later, our delayed hello world. Each clock has this variable now, which returns an instant. Using it, we can calculate the duration, add finish and calculate the duration.
and now we can print it. After executing it, you will see that it took a little more than 3 seconds. That's because we didn't provide a tolerance to the sleep function. So the system decided what it is suitable in this case. Let's add a tolerance here and run it again. Now it executes much faster. The clock also provides a measure closure, which can measure the execution time. We can create a clock here and measure our delayed hello function. Create clock, make duration, remember to add try and await, print the duration and run it. The measures here are high resolution and are suitable for benchmarks. Swift 5.7 introduces quite a lot of improvements for regular expressions. It is not just this proposal, there is more. It has been split into six interrelated proposals, regex type and overview. In this one we have a new regex type, with support for typed captures, both static and dynamic. Regex Builder DSL introduced a result builder based DSL for creating and composing regular expressions. Regex Literals providing compile time checks and type capture inference. Common string processing APIs are missing from the Swift standard library, so this proposal tries to fill the void and adds the new Regex powered algorithms. Better support for the regular expressions is one of the biggest features of the new Swift release. Although you may find yourself not using it that often, I don't remember the last time that I used it in an iOS app. But for the server-side Swift, it's a whole different story. Those were the most interesting new features in the Swift 5.7. Of course, there is more. As I said, this release is huge. For more, you can check the Swift Evolution page where you will find all of the proposals. That's all what I have for you today. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.